Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Hey, welcome back, everybody. If you are starting a business or let's say you're you're changing up your business, maybe going in a different direction, maybe a different division, there's one thing that you absolutely, absolutely need to have, and that is a plan, a business plan. I can totally relate to this. I'm fleshing out a business idea right now. Um, <laughs> and I even try to explain it to people, and they're like, yeah, oh, okay. I don't have anything concrete in terms of a plan. She helps people with that and so much more all the time. And uh, it's great to have her on here. Wanta Ruddison joins us on the program. Welcome. How are you? I'm fine. How are you today, Steve? Terrific. And it's so funny we're talking about this because I had a one-hour conversation yesterday with a colleague to see if he wants to get involved in what I'm thinking. And I work with him, you know, so we we, are, we come up with ideas from time to time. Uh I have to get it officially figured out in terms of what I'm thinking. I have another guy who is, he did a business plan. I don't know how well it is, um, but there's a lot of dollars on the line and a lot of commitment and investment. Um, and he's presenting it to people soon, like e even within the next couple of days. But I, I wonder based on him talking how solid it is because he wasn't professionally directed. Do you oh, find... Wanta, a lot of times people go this on their own, but uh, leave a lot of stuff out, aren't as thorough as they could be or should be because they don't have professional advice. Yes, I do, especially with financials and marketing plans. If your marketing plan is not going to generate income, your business plan is not going to be effective for whoever you're presenting it to. Most investors, the first question, ROI. How do I get my money back? Yep. Your financials don't demonstrate it and your marketing plan doesn't demonstrate it. It's a problem. It's funny you should say that because I own a marketing company. So I do marketing plans all the time. And I had somebody, it's so funny. I'm connected to this person and I'm just sharing me just for, for others. I'm connected to this person and it was a referral to somebody he's connected to. And they wanted something spun around very fast. And I said, okay, I sent it in an email, but it wasn't a polished proposal. And I said, I'm just sending this quickly because I know you wanted all the details now. So the the guy that I know re that referred, he writes back and he says, you know, thank you, but I really need to have that in a polished. <laughs> That's what I'm doing today. Uh, and, but every everything is different. Everything is custom. But yes, that, and my example here is you have to make the right impression the first time. It is so important, right? Exactly. Because you only get one opportunity. Yeah. If you blow it. Um, I suggest that you put a prospectus together first. Get your 10 points in there. Present those. Let them see if it, if it's catching enough for the investor or the person you're trying to present to, to accept it. And then mm -hmm. they'll ex ask for the business plan. But if you can't make that first impression with that one or two page document, you may as well just walk on out of the office and go somewhere else. You lost that one. Yeah, it's so true. And once you put doubt in anybody's mind, in any way, shape or form, even in, fortunately, I'm connected to this guy that I'm referring to, but if he was a brand new prospect, and I had just sent an email and it wasn't all, you know, in a, in a big fancy proposal, uh, I would have walked away, you know? So I, you know, I, I have some slack there, but you're hundred percent right. Doubt is the, the business killer. Exactly. Hmm. So, Take us through the process. So when you work with somebody and we're going to get to coaching in, in just a moment, but when it comes to the business plan perspectives, all of that. What's the process when you work with somebody? The first thing I do, we generate a questionnaire. Questionnaire is pretty thorough, has about maybe 140 questions. It goes through the entire process of you developing your business. Are you a corporation? Are you an LLC? Are you a partnership? We want to know all those things before we get started. Hmm. And then we want to know, do you have licensing? What type of business are you planning on getting? Because each business has different requirements. 
And when we put a business plan together, it's specifically for that individual. So we have to have enough information to work with. So the questionnaire is first. And then after that, we just start developing the business plan. We start with your executive summary. Your executive summary should cover everything that you are going to present in your business plan. And then we work on to the marketing plan and the financial plan. And then your supplements. Hmm. When you say supplements, you mean? Supplements could be um, information that's required for a bank or the investor or anyone. Um, it's generally like um, your financials, your own personal financial statement, um, a license, copy of your license, copy of any contracts or anything that you have that's working in your business right now. And it could be any number of things. Insurance certificates. If you're required to have insurance in your business, you would want to show an insurance certificate. If you own land, if you're a build, if you have a a lease or a lease agreement or whatever, that should be part of your supplement as well. When you work with somebody, are there two models that you have? One where you write the business plan and then another where you show somebody how to do it? Exactly. I do. Hmm. Um, my instruction manual. Generally, what I like to do when I first meet a client is get them to buy the instruction manual. There have been several times um, I was going to write a business plan, and then after they bought the manual, they didn't want me to write it anymore. Well, that's money I lose, but that's acknowledge that they gain. And I would prefer that they have the knowledge because what happens if I'm not around or if I'm not available? And some, they go somewhere else and then they don't know what to do. The person that they go to doesn't really know how to write a solid business plan. So I prefer that they read the manual first because all of the information on how the business plan is put together is in the manual, including a sample business plan. Mm, okay. Um, that, that sample, could it loosely be used as a template? Most likely, yes. Most definitely. Okay. It is a template. Gotcha. Yeah. And, and every, every plan is different. Every goal, every direction is different for you. You've spent decades in an executive uh, position in the banking industry. Tell us your journey getting you here. My journey in the banking industry was, you know, I started from the bottom. I was a teller, then a teller supervisor, then a manager, then a VP of operations business development, note cage manager. I did it all. Let's just say I went through all of the departments in the bank. So I understand what goes on when I work with the business, business development. Um, I work closely with the people that were going to finance the loans. Mm -hmm. And I work closely with the people who needed money because it was my job to go and meet them and bring them to the bank if they qualified. 99% of the people when you first meet them are not ready for financing. Wow. <laughs> uh, when you say not ready, how do you mean? They don't have financials that really lay out their plan as far as how they're going to make money, how they're going to spend money. None of that is in their um, financials. Financials need to be in um, projections if you don't have an up and running business. So when you're doing projections, you have to do research. You can't say I need $50,000 and you can't justify where the money's gone. If you need $50,000, the question is why? Tell me about that. So you're going to uh, a lender. Okay. And in doing so, do you have to bring a business plan and everything that we're describing here in order? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. See, I'm, that's, that's, <laughs> this is, this, this is definitely a uh, foreign material for me at this point. So that's why I'm asking. So interestingly, and, and, do you think that a lot of people looking for financial resource jump into it just to get money? I need to, need to, I can't do anything without the money, but they really don't have a solid plan behind them. They do. But if you don't have a plan, you don't know how much money you need or even if you need money. Right. Some people can start a business without money if they know how to start the business. And my recommendation is that you do start the business without um, the money first to get your footing in the door, because if you don't know what to do in business and you go ask for money, you don't even know how you're going to pay it back. You don't know what you're going to do with it. Sure. You don't know anything. 
And in the case of my uh, friend that uh, is working on the business plan, and it, he's creating a upscale social club. So he he's very connected with uh, some pretty high rolling people. Um, he would need to get in. He would need to get the financial resources to begin because he's got a and he's got a location in mind and they're going to get a lease and all of that. And he's he's pretty solid in all of this, but he would need the money up front. You know, he can't start that business without that. Um, so he'd have to go to investors or lenders, but it doesn't matter who you're going to. Money is money, whether it's a that's lending right. institution or somebody that's investing or a bunch of people investing in your plan. You need a plan. Exactly. <laughs> And so what I would recommend for him is he needs to have a pro forma balance sheet, a promo income expense, profit loss. He needs to have that cash flow analysis. He needs to have that. And um, racial analysis. A lot of times your racials will explain the percentages of money spent in different categories. So are you uh, are your percentages according to industry standard? Or are your percentages numbers that you come up with because you think it's going to be that way? Hmm. Have you done your research so you'll need what industry so you'll understand what industry standards are? Or are you just throwing numbers together because you think it's going to be that way? Everything needs to be researched and developed, even your financials. You don't say I need fifty thousand dollars for payroll and you haven't even identified what your payroll costs are going to be. I would have to imagine that most people don't do the research and they're just making their projections on predictions, you exactly. know? Exactly. Um, there's a marketing trend that has to be considered. And we do a lot of training on um, demographic studies. What venues to use on demographic studies so that you would know how to put one together. So that means if you... Do, do you use the consumer price index? Do you use the data from the Department of um, D Department of um, Employment because they have a lot of stuff? It's just a number of places. Do you go get um, demographics from your Chamber of Commerce? How do you put your demographics together? We actually go through all of the venues that you use to put a demographic together, and we show you how to use them. Well, demographics are so key, especially obviously in marketing. Uh, exactly. But all of this, it seems I have to believe that many people just leave it out. They don't go deep into this. Um, and even if they get the financial backing, it's almost like a recipe for disaster. I'm all about planning. I'm a planner. You exactly. got it. So important. Tell us about your book. Oh, my book is very comprehensive. We go through everything. It's a 210 page book. Um, it's broken up into five sections. Section one, it talks about strategies for developing an effective business plan. Section two, things for consideration. We have a number of chapters in the book that you need to consider. Things like licensing, um, keeping composure under stress. I mean, all of those things are covered wow. because most people don't understand that your customer service is a very important part of the business. Section three, we go through the business plan information and outline. So we give you um, information on how to put the business plan together, the terms that are used. We go over terminology. There's a complete glass glossary in there that explains terminology, especially used by the financial industry. Um, then there's a sample business plan, section four. And then we go through section five, the appendices, which will include supplements, your licensing, and any information that's required based on what the investor wants or the banker or whoever's funding you. Wanta, if somebody is digging into this and you know, let's say they 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 have everything in a row, they 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 put some thought into this, but what is something that somebody typically leaves out of their business plan? I'm talking about people that have done the work, but we don't know, you know, sometimes we leave it out. What do you think it would be? It's the, it's the financials. And I go back to that. I keep going back to that because people don't understand what a financial statement looks like, what a pro forma looks like, a balance sheet, income and expense statement, and the marketing plan. Your marketing plan has to prove that you're going to make money. And how it, how comprehensive does it have to be? That's the other thing. 
Um, my book actually outlines what marketing plan has to have. It goes through every section in a marketing plan so that you will know what to put in your marketing plan. And the marketing plan in my um, template is the largest section in the business plan. Why? Wow. Because that's how you make money. And what do you need to understand? You need to understand your SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. If you don't know what that is, how do you know where you're going to position yourself in the marketplace? What if Joe Blow down the street does the same thing you do, and he's been generating half a million dollars in sales every month, and you try to put your business next door to him? How successful are you going to be? You haven't done your demographic study, so now you're in a place where you won't make money. Your market analysis summary, you need one. Your market segmentation, you need one. Products and services, what are you offering in the business place? And then we have strategies and implementation summary. And then there's a whole section of things that have to be put together to put that strategy together. Digital marketing, are you going to have a digital marketing plan? If so, what does it look like? So we go through all of those things um, so that people will have a comprehensive marketing plan and they will be able to generate the income that they're looking to generate. And the data is all there if if done correctly, even with digital marketing. You know, let's say you're doing Google advertising. Mm -hmm. Google, when you plug in the right numbers, will tell you what you can expect, how many leads, how many conversions, all of that. But you have to do the homework or you have to have somebody doing it that knows what they're doing. Uh, same thing with CPL cost per lead. You know, when you take a look at social media, you can get an idea of what it's going to cost you and what you're going to get. Your return on that is going to be. And that's all fantastic. But if you don't convert those leads, that's the next phase. You're wasting your money. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> and that goes back to what you said, customer service. So if somebody clicks a link, go to your website, they call you. The first line of defense is the person that answers the phone. And exactly. if you, you don't have that down, you know, you, you just wasted that lead. And sometimes depending on your business, you could be paying, you know, 10, 20, 30, $50 a lead. An attorney, attorneys pay like typically in a, Fairly competitive uh, atmosphere, $100 a lead, $150 a lead. So all of this stuff needs to come into, into, into play in terms of the data. It's so important. Exactly. Yeah. I agree. It's and, very important. And I'm not a numbers person. I am not. I'm far <laughs> from it. Uh, I detect that you are very much so. Right. I do look at numbers. Everything needs to be budgeted and planned. If it's not budgeted and planned, you're just spending money, just hoping to, it's, it's like throwing stuff up against the wall and hoping it's going to stick. Yeah. And it's so true. And I think a lot of people do that. They wing it thinking that, uh, well, you know, we'll figure it out along the way, but that's where you waste money. You get frustration. And many times businesses don't succeed because of that. And I don't know what the numbers are now post COVID about, startups and uh, and failure any any thoughts on that i, I think it's a high failing, st failing statistics are pretty high you see major corporations going out of business now you see netflix which has been um, one of the leaders for a long time they've shut down their dvd division they're hurting so bad now that they're charging extra money every month hoping right. to take some of it back and if you watch the marketing trends, that's the thing. I'm using Netflix because everybody knows them. But if you watch marketing trends, especially for the businesses that you are competing with, you will see what the trends are and you can avoid some of the pitfalls that they have. 100%. And guess what? Netflix propelled because of one thing, COVID. Exactly. And now that that happened, they started... The studio started churning out content and everything, but uh, whoops, we, things have changed. But, you know, to their, to the, give them the plus, how many people are going to cancel? By, no. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, who's going to turn around and say, I am not paying that extra $2 a month. It's just not going to happen. I'm going to go get, what are you going to get? You're going to get another fee from, you know whatever carrier of content that you're looking for. But did you know what, Steve? That's for now. And why do I say for now? Look what happened to Blockbuster. They had a, a heavy corner in the marketplace. They sure. were doing extremely well. 
Now I think they have one division somewhere in Nevada, somewhere, one office. Yeah. Everything oh, else yeah. Shut down. So, and look at the automobile industry. Look what happened. People stopped buying cars because of COVID. They weren't making money. So they're trying to bring themselves back and they're working hard at doing that. But if you don't watch marketing trends, you will get caught with your pants down. Let's look at the gas industry. Um, I don't know if people notice this, but if you look at quick trips, all the gas stations and everybody was, when gas was low, they didn't have fuel. You couldn't, you stand in line and by the time it was your turn, there was no fuel. But you go to quick trip, the money was, I mean, the gas was there. Why? Because they have a stock of gas and they predict these things, they plan for it, mm-hmm. and they have the gas. So if you go to Quick Trip, you'll get the gas yeah. during the hard time, and that's why. So if you watch trends and you watch what other people are doing, you won't get caught with your pants down. Yeah, there's a, uh, going back decades, I remember a woman, her name is Faith Popcorn. That was her name. And oh. she would watch the trends, but more of a, in, in ter- psychological and what people are gravitating to. And even before COVID, she predicted something called cocooning where I don't know why, but people are just going to spend a lot of time at home. That's what they're going to do. And wouldn't you know it a year and a half later, people were cocooning but again. This is going back way before COVID, but that was just one of her predictions and I never forgot it. Um, so her and others that are trend watchers, so essential. And I agree with you. Some some other company is going to come along. I'm surprised it's not already and do what Netflix has done and is doing. Um, well, I'm, keep an eye on Roku. Keep an eye on Roku and Fire Sticks. You know, it's interesting. I I was I got Roku before basically anybody else. And, and uh, same thing with Spotify. Look at Spotify. I had exactly. it like, I don't know, six, seven years ago. Maybe, yeah, maybe more. And I would tell people about it and like, what is that? Well, it's great. And I can control the music and in my backyard by using my phone and, you know, which hits my computer in the house, which is send the music out. But nobody knew about it. Now it's kind of mainstream. Now it's, it's kicking Apple. Exactly. And where, where did they come from? You know, they just eventually grew. So yeah, I'm surprised that Roku hasn't had the growth faster i don't know why it is i'd have to i'm curious to look into that because i remember had i had my little roku box way back um and and it's also pre-installed in a lot of tvs and has been for a long time but yeah why did it take so long you know and and how did netflix go like that when roku was here but yeah i agree it's something to watch exactly tell us how the process works wanta when somebody has an idea is maybe fleshing out a business idea, a plan. How does it, how does it work with you? Well, I first want, when I look at that idea, I want to know if it's viable. And Oh, that's, that's painful. Right. <laughs> but and, you know and, what? You're the voice of honesty and reason. Right. And to, to determine if it's viable, there are some things that have to go into play. Number one, is, will it be accepted by the marketplace? That's why we do test markets. A lot of people, you tell them, well, you should do a test market. I don't want to do that. I want to make my money now. Yeah. Try it. See if it works. Yep. No, no one's seen your product. They know nothing about it. You've got all of these big giants out here that's been around for years. And now you want to compete in the marketplace. You don't even know what your footing is, how you're going to complete. You don't even know what your competitive edge is, or even if you have one. It's so true. Uh, even a, you, people do A, B tests when it comes to digital marketing in terms of the creative. You know, how did this work? How did that work? A- absolutely. Yeah. Um, I th- I believe that we're so wired in what I call the, the Amazon mentality where click a button and I bought it that we just want to step on the gas and move forward. Yeah, I got an idea for business. Let's go. Blah, 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 blah. But that's not the way it works. It is so hard. I will tell you this, Steve. It is so hard to pull people back when they get a new idea. Um, they just want to go for it right now. They want to go like a storm in the wind, waiting for somebody to catch them and pull them down. 
and and it's and I tell them all the time, it's not time for that. Once yep. for the time, baby steps. Yep. <laughs> it, it, it's so true. It's almost like, you know, uh, a, an artist has a pile of clay and works with it to come up with a sculpture. Those little things all take time. Your logo, you got to make sure that's perfect and sending the right message with the right colors. You you have to, like you said, the customer service infrastructure has to be there no matter what. Exactly. That's the kiss of death right there. I truly exactly. believe. And I, so many businesses don't understand that. But if you miss that customer, it's it's like everything in life. All you have to do is make one mistake and it's over. That person tells with social media nowadays, it's almost like a disease, a virus coming. Mm-hmm. If you mess up, your name gets on social media, it's over. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, <laughs> you can't take that chance because you can't combat that. Okay. we. It's possible to get an occasional unfavorable review. Maybe it's a miscommunication. You can address it on social media right. and take care of it. But when there's a flurry of them piling up, it's then you're in trouble. Oh, I no. work with a client that had a uh, situation, shall we say, and the reputation management aspect of it was uh, yeah, challenging. Got past it pretty fast, but uh, people were dropping things on reviews and social media. Fortunately, just giving an example here, fortunately, what happened to this company wasn't a reflection of their service. It was something else. Oh, so okay. we were able to get those negative Google reviews taken down because it had nothing to do with the service. But that isn't always the case. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So you do everything to avoid the negativity in your business. And that's by planning. Right. By planning. And I'm not saying you're going to be perfect and you're never going to have a problem. Sure. Everybody has a bad day. And that's OK. It's it's human. Yeah. And that's part of the growth and learning process. Tell me about coaching. I know that you offer that as well. Coaching. Generally, when I'm coaching a business owner, I'm, I do the same thing, questionnaire. What do they plan on um, getting out of this? What do they want? Where do they want to go? What direction are they taking? And the coaching is specific. It's for that individual, for what their goals and objectives are. So we find out what they are. And if they already have, a, let's say they have a business and they haven't been making money, then the coaching will be geared specifically towards their marketing plan, their financial plan, so they can learn how to make money. And it'll it'll definitely address marketing trends and research. Mm-hmm. Um, you're in business, you need to be doing research on a regular basis. People don't understand that. When you write a business plan, it's not a plan that you wrote, now you have your money, it goes in the trash. No, you open it, you review it, you go over it, you make sure that everything you said you were going to do, especially in your milestones, are being done. And if you've accomplished those milestones, now you need new milestones. If you want to grow, you need new ones. So Mm. that's what the coaching is going to address. How to stay in the marketplace, how to keep up with trends, how to be number one in your business, how to become, how to find your unique competitive edge. Everyone has one. They just have to find it. 100%. 100%. It is so true. It's there, but sometimes we don't see it. Exactly. But that's where you come in because you're a, a an impartial eye looking at everything. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I, I love your attention to detail. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, And it's so true. You're not going to grow unless you see other opportunities out there. Sometimes we just put things on autopilot and eventually it's going to catch up with you. Okay, and here's a good question. What do you do when the trends change? Right. Do you react? Exactly. What did Netflix do? Who's buying DVDs anymore? Okay, let's get rid of that. We're going to do something else. So they're putting more stuff on Netflix now than they used to. You're getting um, a a new variety of stuff. They're going to put things in there to take up over the DVDs that they were giving out. So. They'll stay ahead a little bit longer. Yeah. Well, you you're, <laughs> you you have a feeling that the, the competition is heating up. And I tell you, that, now you're making me want to research that and look into what Roku is doing. Because in my view of Roku, okay, they're just kind of just kicking back and not really moving forward. But what do I know? You know, because I'm watching Netflix. Well, well that's it. Um, 
I've been watching. They're putting some of the old stuff on there. Mm -hmm. um, they're getting some stuff on there that, um, and then you've got an older generation. Older generation don't particularly care for this new stuff. Sure. Yeah. So Roku is putting all that old stuff back in there so they can go look at it and, and they don't have to be bothered with the new stuff. Well, I, I totally agree with you. Even the live channels that are offered on Roku uh, and Fire Stick also has them. But I'm going to tell you, my TV in my bedroom has Roku and eh, I have I kind of ignore it. Um, so I flipped it on a couple of about a month or two ago. And I saw the live TV choices. Um, you know, they have a The Price is Right channel. So if you talk about the old stuff, it's just those, you know, episodes from, from the seventies to the, you know, two thousands all being repeated. And, uh, yeah, so it, it definitely, definitely runs deep, uh, as you do in terms of helping people. How do we find you want It's your, your website is your last name, right? Yes. Rudisons.com. R-U-D-I-S-O-N-S.com. And there is a, on the contact page, fill it out. Tell me what you want. And we will get back to you and address your concerns. And for those that want to call, I'll give this number out. It's not on the website because I would be flooded to the point where I wouldn't be able to answer all the calls. But the number is 678-889-2249. That is your number to a brighter, more prosperous future. So make note of it. And the website too. Ruddison's dot com correct correct yeah great talking with you today wanta thanks for all the insight all the details uh i love your passion uh you just want to help people succeed exactly and thank you i enjoy talking with you and hearing some of your stories as well oh well it's very relatable <laughs> and and I, I i will say i'm a victim of not following through deeply in my plans uh and i gotta change that up soon uh thank you so much again you're welcome, and thank you. We'll be right back. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go, and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay.